Hollywood's always had its bad guys. Think the Joker or Darth Vader. But its biggest villain is a man who calls himself Kim.com. 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 Kim.com went from zero to hero, built two billion dollar empire and became the most hated man in Hollywood. Eventually, he will pay. But first, who is Kim.com? Kim.com, formerly known as Kim Schmitz, was a member of a hacking group called Release Scene. As a 20-year-old guy with an interest in computers, he wanted to find a way for himself during the wild 90s in Europe. He invented a system that could evade telephone company bills, but the system was illegal. One day, Kim went on a typical German party, and on the other side of the city, police raided his apartment. They were looking for evidence for copyright infringement, and maybe they hoped to find at least some counterfeit copies of SIM cards. But they were amazed after entering his apartment. Police found and seized equipment which was used to mass produce counterfeit SIM cards and credit cards. At that time, his business wasn't extraordinary. During the 90s, it was expensive to call somebody, and even more expensive if you would make a call to another country. The solution was to produce a counterfeit SIM card that could await telephone company bill. For example, a call from US to Europe would cost $5 per minute with original SIM card. But with his counterfeit SIM card, every call was for free. The price of the SIM card was just a couple of bucks. This way, Kim was able to save his customers a lot of money, but on the expense of the telephone operators. They were well aware of hackers who could evade their billing, so they pushed hard to prosecute them. After the raid on Kim's apartment, there was no other way around than to prosecute him. The damage made to operators like T-Mobile was estimated to $1.2 million. In today's money, it's almost $3 million. Even though the damage was huge for the telephone companies, Kim didn't earn a lot. Considering the price of his SIM card, he was able to make just a few thousand dollars. He ended up in court and faced long-term sentence, but he decided to snitch on other members of the hacking group he was member of. Because of that, the judge gave him just two years suspended sentence. Du, du, du warst auch mal ein böser Hacker, ja? Ganz böse. Und bist rechtskräftig verurteilt? Ja, wegen Computerbetrug. Und was hast du da dann, was kann man da klauen zum Beispiel? Daten, Informationen, Wissen, Macht. After his first incident, nobody could ever expect that he will build two billion dollar empire and become the most wanted man in Hollywood. After his court and the two years suspended sentence, Kim's reputation skyrocketed. He became quite famous in the hacking world, and on the other hand, he got invited to talk shows to speak about his genius hacking mind. Kim Schmitz! Two years of bewährung. Ja. Also gekriegt. Ja? Ich bin rausgekommen aus einer dreimonatigen Untersuchungshaft ja? und hatte auf einmal 50 äh, Firmen, die mich also als Berater beauftragen. <lacht> from more than 50 job offers, he chose the offer from T-Mobile as a consultant. The contract was for one year with a salary of $15,000 per month. At the end of his contract, the executives from T-Mobile found out that he actually never showed up for the work. Nobody saw him but the lawyers who gave him the job. While he allegedly works in T-Mobile and getting his salary, he set up a company called DataProtect, which was a cybersecurity company. In the mid-90s, nobody understood data protection, just hackers or IT developers. He could literally tell the client anything, and they would believe it. For the money he made through his data protection company, he financed other projects. One of them was Megacar. It's basically a video conference system for cars. For the mid-90s, it was revolutionary. To imagine how much revolutionary it was, just look at this old phone. It's IBM Simon, with a price tag of $899.99. Kim started to make a lot of money, and he hasn't even reached the age of 30. Are you Schmidt? Yes, that's Schmidt. He is the richest man in the world. He goes on an investor path as well. But the year 2000 marked end of an era, where any tech company could reach insane valuation on the world's stock market. The best example of it is Pets.com. Even though the website had lifetime revenue of $6 million, they were listed on the stock exchange with a valuation of $300 million. The stock bubble like this had to burst and nobody could do anything about it. Unfortunately for Kim, he had an investment in a website called Let's Buy.com, a direct competitor to Amazon. To save his investment, he decides to use his public persona and pledges to invest another $31 million. Immediately after his public announcement, the stock price of Let's Buy.com skyrocketed by almost 300%. And Kim? He made almost one and a half million dollars from the stock market. But the promise to invest 31 million dollars? It was never followed. 
While Kim was on a holiday in Thailand, an arrest warrant was issued on him. Germany saw his earnings as an act of insider trading. But Thailand is not under German jurisdiction, therefore Germany officially asked Thailand authorities to arrest Kim on their behalf. Thai police took him into one of the best jails around the world, the Thai jail, which features overcrowded cells and best networking groups that you could find. Because Kim had a taste in luxurious resorts, he decides to come back to Germany and face the charges there. But a court hearing is on its way and there he pledges guilty for insider trading and walks away with $100,000 fine as well as 20 months of suspended sentence. Das Urteil zwei Jahre Freiheitsstrafe auf Bewährung für Schmitz die allerletzte Warnung, so die Richterin. As a result of his second arrest, he decides to move somewhere else because he believes that Germany is no longer suited for his next step. He was right. 2005, Hong Kong, the Asian center of capitalism. Kim thought that anything he could do in Europe, it would be easier to do in Hong Kong, where authorities care way less than in Germany. He is already a millionaire and Hong Kong is the best place for him. It wasn't extraordinary to spot him in Rolls Royce driving around the city or enjoying time with beautiful girls. He could afford the life which can afford just the wealthiest people, but he still has ambitions and his mind doesn't let him off the grind. When he does something cool and unusual, he records it. It's not just to build his public persona, but to show off in front of his friends as well. But he can't send them the videos just by an email, and the other options are limited as well. He came up with an easy solution, a website where you can upload your file and send download link to anybody. It's not that different from cloud services as of today. For example, Google Drive is almost the same thing. He and his friends start up a website called Mega Upload. Brem is the one who helps run the company, Matthias is the guy behind the code, and then there is Finn Batato, who is BI marketing, but wasn't one of the founders. Soon after founding, it was used by many primary due to their genius marketing. People all around the world could finally share their videos, music or pictures without any limitations. It was quick, easy and efficient. But users of Mega Upload didn't use the service just to share their personal stuff. It was used to share newly released music and movies as well. The issue with that is copyright. Under the copyright law, you can't share a work of others without the permission of the owner. If only this service was used by a small number of people, but soon, Users 1 billion per day 50 million. 4% of the internet. Those are astonishing numbers. But music labels as well as movie studios were losing their profits, so they wanted to shut down the website. But they legally couldn't, because Mega Upload didn't share cooperative work by itself. Users did. When they uploaded the track or movie on the website, somebody else would use the link and download the file from data storage of the user who uploaded it. The service provided by Mega Upload was completely free for everybody, and if you upload something that will be downloaded a lot, you could even get paid. It sounds like the best service in the world, but users were often unaware who is responsible for the copyright infringement. Studios and labels fought hard for their ownership. If you allow that, you don't have copyright to protect you on the internet, we're dead. Eventually, the ones who shared newly released music or movies ended up in court and walked away without their life savings as a result. It sounds harsh, but one of the main principles of law is that ignorance of it is no excuse. Studios and labels wanted to make an example for stealing their work. Unfortunately, they made an example from ordinary people who didn't know what they were doing. That is why the court ordered to pay astonishing sums for copyright infringement. Simply put, if you will try to steal money from somebody wealthy and powerful, it will end up with consequences. Pretty soon, Kim himself will discover how the justice system works, but we will get to it later. Mega Upload was easily monetizable. Every user was targeted by advertisement, and that means ad revenue. But the download was slow. If you would like to download faster, you could pay for a premium account. That means 10 times faster download and unlimited upload. Mega Upload made so much money that Kim could swim in dollar bills like Scrooge McDuck. He was finally reaching his dream of becoming a billionaire. He certainly feels unstoppable, because everything goes in his direction, even love. During one of his vacations in Thailand, he meets a girl that soon becomes his wife. Her name is Mona Verga. Mona and Kim had love that you could only see in a movie. No, I don't mean something like this. I mean real love. Something comparable to this. I like that. <laughs> Surely it wasn't for the money or the green card. Kim had fallen in love and honestly, Mona as well. They were traveling the world together until they visited New Zealand. 
the place was so beautiful that they decided to move there. Kim bought the biggest estate north of Oakland valued over $32 million. Their villa was astonishing. It became their dot-com estate from where Kim rules over his newly established business empire. You would think the marriage made him more settled, but he understands what it means to build a personal brand. When they officially moved to New Zealand, he organized fireworks that cost him half a million dollars. Now everybody knows he moved to New Zealand. Even though lawyers told him that his business isn't at stake, he feels that he has to go fully legitimate. He was thinking about listing the company on stock exchange, and the expected valuation could be easily over $2 billion. But Megaplot is not enough for Kim. Therefore, he decides to expand. He establishes many more businesses. Mega Movies, a direct competitor to Netflix, Mega Video, which was almost like YouTube, and Mega Life, a predecessor to Twitch. Those are just few examples, but there were many more. He wanted to primarily stop the copyright infringement which was happening through his platform and try to make a bargain with artists, labels and movie studios. He came up with a deal that would profit them as well. You would think that the artists hate Mega Upload the most. It's obvious because the platform steals money from them. But nobody could be so wrong. At that time, it was a Mega Upload who stole their money. Almost every penny from revenue went through the hands of labels and studios. The artists got just a small slice of the pie. Actually, the ones who hated Kim the most were labels and film studios. Therefore, they constantly pushed against his business. We can't be surprised at all, because their incomes were at stake. Kim felt that a storm is coming, since Hollywood is considered by many as the biggest export of US. Just in 2011, it has accounted for 3.2% of US GDP, it means more than $500 billion. Hollywood and its main studios, Disney, Warner Brothers and Paramount, wields enormous amount of power through an organization called Motion Pictures Association. Chris Dodd, the chairman of the association, was a lobbyist with connections to the highest places. He was a senator for 24 years and personally knew Obama, even before he was elected as a US president. Meanwhile in the US, legislators were close to vote on Stop Online Piracy Act, known as SOPA, and Protect IP Act, known as PIPA. This legislation should help to battle piracy sites such as Mega Upload and other cloud storage websites which were used for copyright infringement. Hollywood with its major studios were the biggest sponsors of the legislation, but the public had concerns about censorship and freedom of speech. Silicon Valley tech giants like Google and Yahoo say the bill is dangerous to free speech, with Markham Erickson of Net Coalition calling it thermonuclear war against the internet. Don't make the false assumption this year that because we did it in years past, we're going to do it this year. This industry is watching very carefully who's going to stand up for them when their job is at stake. Because the SOPA and PIPA could give enormous power to U.S. Attorney General. Attorney General could cancel any website which offers any pirated content. And it doesn't matter if the website is from U.S., Hong Kong or Germany. Mega Upload could be cancelled by the U.S. government, but as well as Wikipedia, Google, YouTube, Amazon, and almost every website. The concerns were justified because the legislation could turn into censorship. Even with the concerns around freedom of speech and possible censorship, Hollywood with Chris Dodd tried their best to push it through. And so we need to come up with a mechanism to protect our jobs and protect the intellectual property by going after those sites or those search engines that allow these illegal criminal foreign sites to exist. Their incomes were threatened because the major source of income for movie studios is selling the movie in cinema. But if you download the movie from Mega Upload, the studios doesn't get paid. It looked almost certain that SOPA and PIPA will pass. But Kim.com and its marketing director Finn Batato put an ace out of their sleeves in the most crucial time of their business. A song starring Will I Am. Kanye. Or Kim Kardashian. The public wasn't quiet either on the matter of the legislation. Almost every website was against it as well, and we can be surprised because their business was at stake. On January 18th, 2012, the biggest online protest happened. The major organizers were Wikipedia and Reddit. They played a vital role. They wanted to show what would happen and it would be an internet blackout. 
Wikipedia shut down their whole website with an explanation why it threatens freedom of speech and establishes censorship. Other participants were not such extremists. One of them was Google, which covered their logo in black and stated, Tell Congress, please don't censor the internet. Mojang, the company behind Minecraft, made splash text that stated, Sopa means loser in Swedish. Many other big tech companies joined as well. The protests worked. After the public outcry, many officials who supported the legislation withdrew their support. The freedom of internet was saved. And you would think that came with his growing empire as well. I'm good at this whole business game. You're just a plain businessman. A plain businessman who, when he was a teenager, hacked into the Pentagon and NASA. Come on. It is exactly one day before Kim's birthday, and he already celebrated the success of denying the legislation vote. But wheels of power work quietly, and they are not often publicly seen. US issued an arrest warrant on Kim.com and his associates. The New Zealand police was ordered to raid Kim's house. From original footage we see that they are using automatic rifles and helicopters just to arrest a tech guy who was behind Mega Upload. The police seized Kim's cars, accounts, cash and put him into jail. Mega Upload was shut down by FBI. Many other file sharing services decided to stop offering their service due to the fear of US authorities. US sent clear message. If you touch money of the government supporters and they don't like it, we will come and make an example from you. But this is not the end. What happened after the raid have shaken the whole society in New Zealand. Firstly, Kim is advised by his lawyers to keep quiet. But a group called Anonymous saw US message as a threat to freedom of speech. In retaliation for shutting down Mega Upload, they launched their largest attack on US infrastructure. Hello, Congress of the United States. We are anonymous. We are here to address the current situation on the recent shutdown of the file sharing website, Mega Upload. We have access to banking and credit card information of millions of citizens. But as for the citizens, do not fear. To those who support SOPA and PIPA, to those congressmen who want to vote yes on these bills, we are not fucking playing. You have been warned. Operation Global Blackout Part 1 engaged. In a few minutes after their announcement, they have taken down US Copyright Office, US Justice Department, Universal Music, Motion Pictures Association, and FBI's website. The attack was not just because of shutting down Mega Upload, but to defend internet privacy as well, because it is certain that the move against Kim and Mega Upload was made to satisfy Hollywood representatives after the SOPA and PIPA did not come through. The charges against Kim included racketeering, copyright infringement, and money laundering. The US prosecution claimed that Kim made $175 million by copyright infringement with half a billion dollars of damage to movie studios and labels. But to face the charges, Kim had to be extradited to US. But the extradition process is not as easy as it seems, and eventually, he was released on bail. After his release, Kim decided to openly speak about this arrest to show the world his side of the story. Welcome back to our interview with Kim.com. We begin this part of it with the unprecedented prosecution in New Zealand, but by the FBI. The FBI indictment, their charges, which is a very long document, full of some of the most emotive language I've ever seen. In it is a press release, <laughs> an indictment of 72 pages, which is so maliciously designed, has been unheard of. It's nothing more but a press release filled with things out of context, designed, to make me look as bad as possible. There is a law in the US that protects us, which is the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, that protects online service providers from actions of their users. And this is the same law that allowed Google to still exist, that allowed YouTube to still exist. And they've used these words that you are unprecedented, that the scale of your piracy is unprecedented that there has never been anything like it before in human history, that you are the pirate to beat all time. Yeah. It's kind of like weapon of mass destructions in Iraq. You know, if you want to go after someone and you have a political goal, you will say whatever it takes. These are fabrications and lies. There are 100 other companies out there that offer the same service like us. Why has nothing happened to them? 
Now the public can see that there is not just a bad Kim with his mega upload. There is much more than that. The US government is the most power hungry government out there. And GCSB is one of the puppets on the strings of the US government. And the biggest puppet of them all is John Key, your prime minister. Kim was certain that his house was wiretapped. He came to this idea while playing Call of Duty. He has noticed that his internet connection is slowed by 40 milliseconds. Kim.com was spied on illegally by the GCSB. The High Court determined that. The Prime Minister agreed the High Court were right and apologised to Kim.com. As a result of all of that, he claims that the New Zealand Prime Minister is part of a conspiracy and made a deal to serve Kim to the US authorities on the Golden Plate. Kim builds on his newly acquired fan base and decides to launch a political party called the Internet Party. The idea was born out of the injustice around my case, right? The raid, the legal spying, the destruction of my business, my internet website. For Kim, it feels like he can change society and maybe, just maybe, he won't be extradited to US. The war for the internet has begun. Hollywood is in control of politics. The government is killing innovation. Don't let them get away with that. Keep this movement going. Keep this movement tweeting. Keep this movement moving. The pursuit of happiness. happiness. Kim certainly felt like he's winning. Unfortunately, it was too much pressure on Kim's wife Mona. She couldn't sustain it, so they decided to split. Kim issued a statement on their separation. After a few months, it didn't look good for his political party either. From their surveys, it became obvious they can't reach parliamentary seats. The next step was to collaborate and boss with party called MANA. Kim had followers, as well as haters, who hated him from the bottom of their heart. The game of politics is completely different from what he knew, and the election day was right behind the corner. The general election day is here. Kim's political party has lost. Good evening, everybody. We lost tonight because of me. No, 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 no. I take, I have to say this, I have to say it. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry, I have to say this. I have to say this, I take full responsibility for this loss tonight because the brand, the brand Kim.com was poison for what we were trying to achieve. Soon after the polls, the Prime Minister resigned and gave apology to Kim for spying on him weeks before the arrest. Kim was offered a deal from the US Justice Department. If he agreed on committing to crimes he was accused of, nothing will happen. Kim declined. Some of the mega uploads executives were sentenced to jail in New Zealand. Kim's extradition process is ongoing and only future will show us how it ends. Hey, if you like this video, check out my latest one. And if I can ask something from you, click the subscribe button to help me make better videos. Don't worry, it's free and you won't commit copyright infringement.